Okay, we're checking out another Tesla video. It's called uh, Tesla Prices Now Match a Toyota Corolla. This is big news, guys. Uh, it's going to change a lot of things. Yeah, let's check out what they have to say. Bring in our cash tag segment. And for that, I would like to bring in Mr. Andy Swan. He's the co-founder of Likefolio.com. And we're talking Tesla. Andy, you know what I love the most? Is when Likefolio reaches out with data that you guys have, because I know it's something good when you do that. So you came to us with the idea of Tesla today. So I'm excited to hear what you guys are talking about. What do you have for our viewers in Tesla? Yeah, um, you know, Tesla reports earnings uh, next week, and um, we're not sure how that will go. We think that'll go okay. There's some chi there's some uh, delivery problems in China, some production problems that I think are already baked into the cake. But from a long-term perspective, you know, we just have to say that Tesla looks to be firing on all cylinders, and there, there's really one big reason for that, and that is they've gotten the price of the vehicles down to. Uh, kind of no-brainer levels from a competitive standpoint. You know, they've got the base model three uh, sedan now is at thirty-nine thousand dollars or under thirty-nine thousand dollars. You know, which is nine thousand dollars less than the average car purchase price in the United States, and right there with a Toyota Corolla in terms of uh, you know from a competitive standpoint. All of a sudden, what you know four or five years ago was a luxury kind of neat to have gimmicky type of thing to own a Tesla and it was very expensive is now, you know, right there on par with buying a Toyota Corolla and who who would have thought that we could get there. You can see uh, the drastic price cuts that uh, Tesla has been able to put out there. Um, really so we see here the Model 3 and the Model Y are now under the U.S. average um, in price for vehicles that's including gas powered vehicles so corolla is obviously a gas powered vehicle that is one of tesla's biggest one there's 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 a ton of like misinformation and people don't realize but if you ask anybody you go on the street you ask anybody your cousins your uncles your your parents they think that teslas are expensive there's there's no there's like almost nobody knows that teslas are affordable i have a model y and a model three and people you know, approach me sometimes if I'm dropping off my kid and like, wow, you have a Tesla. Like, what do you do? Like, but okay. Granted, at the time when I bought them, they were pretty expensive, but now they are thirty nine thousand dollars for a Model Three. So um, they're not that expensive. But the problem is people don't know this. So having this on the news on the mainstream media is a great advertising tool to get more people to understand that teslas aren't 100k and above anymore they're very very affordable they're more affordable than the u.s average so um, i'm happy this is happening and mainstream media is covering it really matches up really nicely with the with the cost of ownership you know uh, interest rates have gone up considerably so leasing or purchasing a car on a loan has gotten significantly more expensive and so what Tesla has done is uh, combated that through price cuts. And I think they're going to be able to maintain their margins while they, while they do that. And the response from the consumer that we've seen to these price cuts has been extraordinary. Um, you know, web visits to Tesla.com are up 59% year over year to all time <coughs> highs. Uh, you know, this is a massive, massive wow. move from a company that gets most of its Okay, let's check this out. Um, the Tesla website up 59% year over year. So that is incredible. So a lot of some Tesla um, bears are saying that uh, if they keep pr cutting prices, then they're going to mar their margins are going to go lower. So but as they sell more vehicles, the economy of scale comes into play. They could, um, they, yeah, economies of scale come into play and they'll maintain their margins. And especially another part of their plan is to launch full self driving. So the more cars you have on the road, the more people that will be enticed to upgrade. And when Tesla starts selling uh, apps in the app store and kind of doing all that with the with the app side of things, that's another big advantage of having more people have the cars similar to phones like that strategy, get more people having the phones. And once you do the, um, the sales of the apps and the monthly subscriptions, and you get a cut from all that. That's another side of the business that people aren't really looking at. Um, the Apple and Android side that are doing that now. Also, um, 
people don't realize this too, but you pay about I'm paying about fifteen dollars a month uh, for for Tesla for the advanced um, the Wi-Fi capability. So to connect to the internet, to watch YouTube and Netflix, and to get uh, advanced maps and all that stuff in the car, you're paying fifteen dollars a month. So obviously, the more people that have that, uh, the better off. You know, the more money comes in monthly for Tesla. So four million cars. You know, five million, six, ten million. You know, you know, multiply that by fifteen dollars a month, and you know, you get a big number. So, the more cars on the road, the better. And uh, the website is up huge in the past ninety days. It's purchases through online channels, especially Tesla.com. So, seeing those web visits at all-time highs in reaction to these price cuts tells us uh, Tesla is creating basically a one-horse race. Uh, and, and expanding the lead in the EV market, and now is just becoming a matter of time. We think before it's just the dominant automotive company. Period. Uh, I love the point, Andy, and you can feel the pressure being exerted from Tesla right now, making these decisions to move prices lower from strength, not necessarily from weakness. Although you'll read uh, that they're trying to spur it's, demand, it's but your data it's, certainly yeah. suggesting different. I've read a lot about them maybe deploying, and they've been disruptors in many ways uh, in this space and the model of which you do business with them, very different than traditional autos. But this idea of the razor, razor blade model, do you see anything in that uh, where they're not necessarily even seeing the car possibly as the driver of, of actual bottom line earnings, but rather all the things that you can add to it, all the technologies they're working on, and this becoming more of almost a software or service-like company in the long term? Yeah, you can really feel that. You know, I feel that as a Tesla owner, when you get into the car, every couple of weeks that's downloaded an update that makes your car even better at driving 79 miles an hour through traffic and going, you know, off the exits at the right time and making the turns all on its own. I, and I just think to myself, if a company can pull off that with me, you know, and my family sitting in the car and do that safely, then what can't they achieve from a software and artificial intelligence perspective? So I really think of Tesla as one of the biggest, greatest artificial intelligence plays there is. The, the computing power that they're amassing, the data that they're amassing, uh, pretty much unrivaled among uh, certainly any automotive companies. It could be uh, unrivaled across the world, except for maybe Microsoft and Google. Uh, so, you know, I think your point is well taken. There's rumors you know, that Elon Musk may roll out a, a smartphone at some point. You know, he's, he's got hmm. the satellites in the sky. He owns the world's so. largest <laughs> real-time, so. uh, you know, conversation network in Twitter or X. And so you kind of can see where this could go a lot of different directions. And you could see, uh, you know, a, a scenario where actually the car becomes, you know, that, that first hit that gets people into the ecosystem, uh, much like Apple did with the iPhone. And then, you know, Tesla X, whatever you want to call it, all becomes one big software as a service play. I could totally uh, see how that could happen, and I wouldn't bet against it in any way. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Similar to what I was saying earlier, um, Tesla is more than just a car company. You know, they're obviously, I think most people here that are watching this uh, believe that too. There are some that don't, actually. The comments are quite interesting. <laughs> but, um, yeah, they want to do the full self-driving, so they're the one of the biggest AI plays out there. I know every time, every couple of weeks, my car gets an, an update on both my Model 3 and my Y, and it constantly improves the full self-driving. The um, the UI gets better, you know, it adds features. You know, when I first got my Model 3, it didn't have Sentry mode, and then I got an over the air up over the air update, and then it got Sentry mode. Um, and it got uh, all a lot of a lot of features have been coming to the car. It, your car gets better over time. So simply w what I'm trying to say. So um, and also with the app store, that's another play as well. The software, like I said, you could buy apps. And then you, once you buy apps or you subscribe to services through the system, then you'll get a cut of similar to what Apple and uh, Android do. They get a cut of the sale of those monthly subscriptions. So um yeah, it's a huge play going there too as well. But I think Tesla wants to make money for their car sales as well. I don't think they're like, no, we're not going to make any money on the cars. It doesn't matter. We just want people getting the software. I think they want to make money 
selling the cars and do the software play as well. Andy, the drum I beat whenever we talk about Tesla is the pipeline, right? And yep. Kathy Wood came out with a statement that is quite incredible. She said by well, 2027, there, their move into autonomous driving, right? They'll make more money from autonomous driving 27. by 2027, not that far away, than they do from EVs with margins hmm. of over 50%, Andy. Pretty like early. I said, what would frighten me if I was ever a Tesla bear would be the pipeline and what's next and what's coming. Yeah. Like the robo taxi, right? Which is supposed to dominate their earnings in the future, Andy. Yeah, you know, I think Kathy Wood um, is an excellent, I think she has excellent visionary qualities. I think her date may be a little aggressive. You know, I'll, I'll tell you as a, as someone who uses the autonomous driving of Tesla all the time, I'm, I'm constantly having to turn it off in certain situations, certain weather conditions. It's making leaps and bounds of progress, but the idea that people will be getting into these without anybody in the driver's seat uh, just a few years from now, I think is, uh, is very aggressive and very optimistic, but I do think it will happen. And I think that the, the trajectory of the predict prediction is correct. And so you think about that, you think about the AI infrastructure that they'll, they're building, the computing power that they're building, you know, the mapping technology. There's a lot of ways for this company to make money that don't rely on selling a car for more than it costs to produce. And they're even winning at that. And so I think uh, from a long-term perspective, you just, it, this is kind of one of those companies where I think the Tesla Q folks have folded and and are out of the game at this point. I don't I would, know. I, would at least <laughs> I don't hope think they, that uh, they're still that there. This is either you know I'm in it because I'm bullish or I'm waiting to get in it uh, because the the price could drop in the near term. But I think those are the kind of the two only um, you know acceptable outlooks at least from a like folio <laughs> perspective. You know, Andy. Okay, so something that I've been wanting to say. I've said it a few times on this channel, but exactly what he's saying here. I own. Um, a Model Y with full self-driving. Like I've been driving um, the full self-driving for almost a year and a half now. And I'm constantly having to take it out of, um, of full self-driving. In interventions like crazy. But I live in Canada. I live in Toronto. So I don't know. Maybe it's different here. But almost I use it pretty much every day. And I drive the same route to drop my kids off and pick them up every day. And every day I just go one way is straight and then I have to make a left and it's straight and it's about a 20 minute drive. And every day I have to take it out because it does something not good. <laughs> so um, if you're going to be in this space and you're going to comment on when you think full self-driving is going to be ready, you have to drive the car. You have to own it and drive the car. I know there's some creators out there that are have. Uh, really optimistic outlooks on full so full self driving and they don't own the car and they don't use full self driving i use it every single day i believe in it i know i have 100% sure they're going to get to full self driving but it's not going to be anytime soon guys cuz there's so many edge cases out there um there's so many little things that they have to correct some of the stuff i'm like how the heck are they going to figure this out because um it's just a really difficult situation when you're driving. There's so many variables. Um, some of the simple ones off the top of my head is like speed bumps. Like it'll go plow right through speed bumps. Um, if there's construction and there's like potholes or like things like sewers sticking out of the ground, they'll just, it'll plow right through that. Um, there's a lot of little edge case things like that, that it just doesn't do. And you have to take it out. Um, and, I think he's exactly right because he drives it every day. Um, I know Elon tweets a lot about living in uh, California and having no interventions wherever he goes, but maybe it's because in California there's so many Teslas and they've um, figured that those roads out. But I think anyone living outside of there, um, it's not the same story. Like there's a lot of interventions still. Uh, if the weather changes, I live in Canada, it gets snowy here and sometimes there's snow on the road and the speed limit is 60 kilometers an hour and it'll go 60 like it won't take into the account that there's snow on the ground so you have to take it out and you have to go drive slow you know so there's edge cases like that where 
it's not quite ready and it and I, it's going to be hard for it to figure that stuff out like how's it, it's going to figure out that there's snow on the ground how much snow on the ground is there ice underneath how fast should it go like there's a lot of things that's that 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 are like that that um it's going to be extremely difficult to figure stuff like that out uh yeah i <laughs> i'm confident like i said i'm confident they're going to get to a solution but 2027 is extremely early I think they're going to need a lot more time than that. And it sucks, but I do drive the car every day. And um, I hate to say this because I love the company and I want them to, I want full self-driving to to come out next year. But it's just not ready and it's not going to be ready for a while. If anything changes and a new update comes out, I'll fully let you know that, hey, they fixed this. They, they figured this out. Um, it's sooner than I thought. But 2027 is too early for me. I don't think it's going to be there by then. I think they're going to need a few more years to figure it out. But uh, if anything changes, I'll let you know. Yeah, that kind of goes along the lines of sort of my final uh, comment slash question for you. So one of the phrases I heard when I first got in this business is never fade a superstar. That doesn't uh, stop at just trading or investing, goes to sports and everything. Yep. When you're looking at this, I think it's hard to not think of Elon Musk uh, with that entrepreneurial uh, mindset that willing to disrupt uh, is anything other than a superstar at this point when it came to uh, what they've created at Tesla. But as an entrepreneur yourself and someone who's constantly looking at ways to disrupt it and think outside the box, is there any other company that's achieved this level of, of scale and size that still thinks that way on a daily basis? You said Apple. But Apple's still such a machine and they're doing things so methodically, it doesn't feel like they're changing the world anymore. They just right. impact the world. Tesla se seemingly is still changing and disrupting on a daily basis. Yeah, I, I don't yeah, think true. we've really seen, uh, you know, and I think Apple when, um, you know, when Steve Jobs was still at the helm felt that way. I think there is a connection between having the founder or at least, you know, in Elon's case, the very early, you know, kind of lifetime CEO of the company still involved and still with that visionary spirit rather than the financial, you know, implications type of uh, methodical approach that you're talking about. So I don't think that we've ever seen a company uh, that got to these levels that still had that, you know, inquisitive, optimistic, change the world type of founder mentality since since we had steve jobs at apple i think that's the best analogy i can come up with and i agree with you you don't bet against tesla look tesla is a very volatile stock so the idea that it could fall 40 percent over the next six months is very very real so people need to understand they're still taking a considerable risk buying tesla at any price level if their outlook is near term or if their exit is near term but i think long term if we look at tesla and think Hey, anytime I see 40%, 30% off of highs, uh, you know, I might dip my toes in and buy a few more shares. I think it's probably a good uh, overall outlook. Yeah, what, you know, it's interesting. Changing the world has growing pains, right? And yeah. if, if, you, if you, and Tesla is so far ahead of everyone else. And I got one two word example, charging stations, right? They are the clear leader where now the, uh, the, the, Legacy auto worker automakers are using Tesla to charge their their electric vehicles. It's nothing short of spectacular. Andy Swan, thanks for coming on. I knew you'd deliver the goods, Andy. Today, Th <laughs> thanks for coming on. As always, have a great day. This guy has a lot of energy. I like this guy on the left. <laughs> he's he's pretty cool. I like him. He's like a sports announcer, but he's um, um really on board with Tesla. Uh, yeah, so I agree with. Pretty much all of um, his points, the guy on the right here saying, talking about, yeah, all the things about Tesla and how uh, Tes don't trade a star player. And Elon Musk is basically like the MVP of planet Earth right now. So um, he's trying to change the world and make it better. So and he's actually executing that and growing this company to massive scales and making a lot of people rich on the way. So um it's a long-term play. I, I buy every month. I buy the stock every month since 2018. I've been doing, I've been buying the stock every single month and I am a long-term investor. So 10 plus years, I'm not planning on touching it. I haven't taken out any stock. I haven't sold anything. I've been just buying and accumulating stock 
um, over the past four years, and um, I'm gonna five five years. I'm gonna continue to do so um, till I don't even know when. So I'm just gonna keep buying. So uh, I'm in it for long term. I don't know if this isn't a short term type of um, play here. Um, it's a it's a long term, obviously a long term thing. So. Um, I'm going to continue to buy more stock. If you want to help me buy more stock, and if this video isn't on Patreon, check out Patreon for the full unedited, and you get um, full uh, exclusive content there. So I post exclusive videos to Patreon, so that helps support the show. Um, subscribe to the channel. We're trying to hit 1,000 subscribers. Like the video. That really helps a small channel like this out. And I'll see you next time.